Hello and uh, welcome to a CQP web tutorial video. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at the frequency list display function and if we look at uh, the menu here on the front page of this corpus which happens to be the Brown family of corpora uh, then you can see the frequency list option is on uh, this section of the um, is on this section of the menu. So if we click there, we get a very simple control uh, which allows us to access frequency lists that are stored on the system for this corpus. Now, it's possible for there to be several different frequency lists stored for any particular corpus. Um, there is always, uh, if the corpus has been set up correctly, then there will always be a frequency list for the entire corpus but it's possible for there to be frequency lists for other um, for other um, parts of the corpus, for subcorpora, for sections of the corpus to be compiled and stored on the system and using this control we can see them. So let's talk through uh, the form. Um, Let's look at what you see by default. By default, the first option here, View Frequency List 4, is set to the whole of the corpus. So because this is called Brown Family Extended, it says the whole of Brown Family Extended. Secondly, by default, it's set to look at a frequency list of word forms. Then you have a few more settings here that I'll talk about in a minute, but let's just press Show Frequency List to see what we get with those default settings you get a very simple table that quite simply does pretty much what it says on the tin. It lists all the words in the corpus and it tells you what the frequency of each one is. So the most frequent word is the 397,000 times and then followed by full stop and comma, then followed by of and to are in that. Nothing terribly surprising for a written corpus if you've seen frequency tables before. Um, once you scroll right to the bottom, you'll see that there's only a set number per page. So we can scroll through the pages by clicking on this link here. And you have controls. This link takes you to the beginning of the list, previous page, next page. So there we are, back to the beginning. And then you have a control here. Um, the first control, new frequency list, takes you back to that form. If I go back in the browser to here, new query is the standard return to beginning option and then the option in the middle, download whole list, downloads a text file containing the entirety of whatever list you see here. Now these text files are often quite big. Uh, this one is uh, two or three megabytes I think, but if I drag in my text editor uh, then you can see uh, what the text file contains. There it is. Frequency list, word frequencies in the entire Brown family extended. And then we have the sort number, the rank of each word, followed by the word, followed by its frequency. So a plain text version of exactly what you see on the screen, except that this contains the whole thing. It goes right the way down to the 112,000th most frequent thing and so on and so forth. All the many, many words that only occur once. Uh, the technical term for which is hapax legomena. Uh, and I'm not going to spell that for you. It's not that important. Uh, you also have a line at the bottom of this download which tells you the total frequency of everything in the list. Which in this case is 6,897,517. So that's the download function. So there we've seen all the elements of the frequency list uh, interface. Uh, all that remains to be explained in this tutorial is those option tweaks that we have back in the frequency list display. So first let's talk about viewer list based on. Um, as I've discussed when talking about other aspects of CQP Web. All corpora in CQP Web can have layers of annotation. So the word form itself is a layer of annotation, the actual tokens of the text, but it's possible to have 
um, other layers of annotation uh, so popularly corpora very often have a layer of POS tags where every word is associated with a part of speech tag often there's a lemma layer uh, a lemma annotation and if you drop down this thing here you can see that it's possible to get a frequency list for any of the available um, layers of annotation so let's try it with part of speech tag just to show you uh, and there we go um, you've got a frequency list of the part of speech tags and the most frequent part of speech tag is NN1 which in the particular tag set we're using here means singular common noun so that's the most frequent part of speech note that that's actually more frequent than the tag for AT which is the tag for articles including the which is the single most common word so when you group words together under their tags sometimes the thing at the top represents a grouping of things which individually would not be high up on the frequency list um, so that's why uh, it's useful to have the option to access any of them because part of speech tags are a finite set this frequency list only runs for two or three pages and then we get to the bottom uh, two or three may have been uh, an exaggeration but it's uh, about seven um, a couple of these things look like encoding errors such as that that is certainly not a tag uh, anyway um, to cut a long story short it's uh, a much shorter list so even with 426 items that's still an awful lot less uh, than the um, what was it in the other frequency list? It was, uh, just look at the text file, it was 142,000 different word types. So, there you go. Um, let's go to a new frequency list. So that was part of speech tag. Uh, let's see, semantic tag. Very similar deal. The categories here represent groupings of words. Uh, they are not uh, individual words. Now, you may have noticed that in any frequency list, the item in this column is a link. And the, what that link does is take you to a query for that particular item. So if we take, for instance, M1, the semantic tag M1, and we click on that link, then we get a query for semtag equals M1 and M1 is words to do with movement in the semantic tag set being used here so you've got a lot of words to do with movement in fact you've got 61,000 of them if we go back uh, and if we go to new frequency list then let's do one for a part of speech tag uh, let's pick one of the ones that's not quite so common as the very very common one uh, well, let's pick RG, which means degree adverb, in this particular part of speech tag set. Very, under, over, to, around, ruddy, which is actually a, tag, a tagging error here, because ruddy doesn't mean very in this context, it's someone's name. Pretty, to, around, very, around, about. Various things that are tagged as degree adverbs. Uh, and for sake of completeness let's see it with a lemma um, now note that when we lemmatize because all punctuation marks get this special code punk p-u-n-c as their lemma in this particular annotation scheme although the is the most frequent word form the is not the most frequent lemma uh, the um, uh, the punctuation lemma is actually twice as frequent as the Remember that punctuation marks count as separate tokens in CQP web, always and everywhere. Um, let's find an interesting lemma and click on it. Uh, let's try the lemma for she, which should include she and her as well, because her is of course an inflectional form of she. Yes, there we are. We've got the nominative or subjective case she, and the accusative or objective case her, both being grouped under the same lemma as they should be and the lemma is the nominative case form um, and of course uh, the same thing can be done with word forms we can show the frequency list of word forms and uh, I don't know uh, let's click through a few pages and then choose a word randomly uh, there we go another 
and what we get is a nice straightforward word query for another. So that's all the aspects of the table including the links that we have to specific queries. Let's go back to the interface and talk about more of the options. Uh, we'll stick with word forms for the minute but let's look at uh, this option here the different frequency lists that are available. As it says at the top you can view the frequency lists for the whole corpus and frequency lists for subcorpora you have created. Uh, I'm not going to talk about subcorpus creation, there's a separate tutorial on that. Basically you create them on this screen and I've created four subcorpora, each one of which corresponds to one of the major genre divisions, fiction, general non-fiction, academic non-fiction and, and uh, press. Uh, and for each of those subcorpora that I've created I've generated the frequency list. Because it says available here then that means that in the frequency list interface I can select one of those and look at its frequency list. So when I drop down the uh, control here for view frequency list 4 the default is to look at the whole corpus but I've also got different subcorpora here uh, which, I can, um, which I can select. I'm uh, not sure why Learned is there twice. Uh, that looks like a bit of a glitch in the database. Never mind. Um, let's look at the frequency list for fiction. Uh, there we go. The is not at the top anymore. The punctuation marks are. Uh, and a lot of the pronouns seem to be higher up, which you often get in fiction because it contains dialogue. And in dialogue you get lots of pronouns. So I and she and you are higher up the frequency list than they otherwise would be. And you can observe things like that. Um, let's look at learned the is back at the top I and other pronouns nowhere to be seen so these are the kinds of things uh, that you can see from looking at the frequency list for different subsections of your corpus the last thing to explain is the slightly more advanced options that you get uh, in the bottom half of the table uh, first of all, there are some things that you can do to control the display. So you can control the display of how many items you get per page. By default it's 50, as we've seen, but you can increase that. Let's roll it up to 1000. And you can also change the order that the frequency list is presented in. So as we've seen by default, it's sorted with the most frequent thing at the top but you can also sort it with the least frequent at the top or in alphabetical order. Uh, least frequent at the top is not terribly useful because we know that in any corpus there are loads and loads and loads of words that just occur once. Uh, we will look at it in a minute but let's look at alphabetical order first. So we'll stick with the whole corpus and word forms and there we are, alphabetical order. As far as CQP Web is concerned, alphabetical order always means punctuation first, so anything starting in a punctuation mark is going to be at the start of the alphabetical order. But if I pull it down far enough, come on. Ah, a thousand items and we haven't even got to A. Let's go back up. Uh, still punctuation marks at the start of the word. And then after punctuation marks it's numbers. Obviously there are lots and lots of different numbers and all occurring just one time. Well most occurring just one time. And it's actually... Ooh, call Lummy. Ah, there we are. A. It's round about 13,000 items into the frequency list before we get to uh, words actually starting with A. So alphabetical order can be interesting, but it's usually only useful if you've narrowed things down a bit. If you're not actually searching for, um, if you're not actually searching for um, everything in the frequency list. Let's take a look at how that works. Um, so let's look at a thousand again. Uh, and this time let's say, let's put it in alphabetical order, and let's search for things with frequency between, uh, let's say, 10 and 10,000. Right? So not the very most frequent things, but not the rarest things either. So that allows us to filter it out a bit and look at 
uh, it'll exclude things like numbers that occur just once. Um, and there we get, again, lots of numeric and punctuation things that occur more than once. But hopefully we should get to words beginning in A before we have to go on to the next page. Oh, come on. Maybe not. Maybe it's going to be all numbers. Ah, there we are. Takes us about 800 to get up to the letter A, this time instead of 13,000. So you can see how the frequency between number and number works. You can see how, how many per page works. Uh, for the sake of argument, let's look at what happens when we sort it by the least frequent thing. Yes, here we are. Lots and lots of things with a frequency of 1. Uh, and the secondary sort, as you can see, is by the uh, alphabetical order. So all of the things that have the same frequency are arranged in alphabetical order. Um, right, the next, uh, the only thing left to explain here is this control, the filter by pattern. What this allows you to do is enter a few letters and say only find me things that start with or end with or contain um, what I've put in. So for example if I put in stab and say find me the frequency list of everything that starts with stab then there we are stable, stability, stab, stab, stabilization, so on and so on and so forth. Uh, again ordered by frequency but it didn't have to be we could have ordered it by uh, uh, we could have ordered it by alphabetical order just as easily. There we go, alphabetical order. Same items, different order. Let's see one, let's try words ending in ing. Let's see the frequency list for that. There it is, being, during, going, something, nothing, having, thing, so on and so forth. Uh, this is quite a long list. Um, let's try containing. So, um, how about str, str, words with str anywhere in them. So, street, industry, we've got str, strong, structure, industrial. You can see that the str can occur anywhere in the word, but as long as it's got str somewhere in it, it will appear on this frequency list. So, it's very, very configurable. Finally, you've got matching exactly, where if there's a word whose frequency you want to look up, then you can say, uh, I don't know, let's say stress, for instance, since I've got strut on my mind, uh, show me a frequency list of words that match stress exactly. In this case, there will be just one word that matches that, and the frequency is there. So you've got a one word frequency table, which is just as downloadable, incidentally. So if I download the frequency list and open it in my text editor then I drag it across there it is you can see you've got a one line table in the text download um, so yes if I go new frequency list that explains all the options that you have and they're all combinable so for example you could pick a subcorpus general prose could pick part of speech tag. You could say, find me part of speech tag starting in N, for instance, uh, uh, with frequency between, uh, let's say, 25 and 25,000. Um, and you could say, give me 200, 350 in alphabetical order. Right, so I've chosen a different setting for every single setting there. They all work together all the options occur and it says at the top of the screen what you've got part of speech tag frequencies in the subcorpus I chose with the pattern I entered and occurring between the two limits that I entered uh, and as you can see it's sorted alphabetically it's not sorted uh, by frequency so again all of those options can be combined together in whatever way you like uh, and that explains everything that there is to know, really, about the frequency list viewing function. Um, related to the frequency list viewing function is the keyword function, but I'm going to talk about that in a different tutorial. So that's that.